Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the most magical podcast in the Midwest. That's right, the Magic in the Midwest podcast, starring USA Today best-selling author J.B. Michaels and his more successful wife, Ashley Michaels. And now, your host. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 103rd 103 episode of the Magic in the Midwest podcast. I am J.B. Michaels, uh, USA Today bestselling author. Um, many books, including Raftery's Ghost, a Mac and Millie mystery, which just came out uh, um, just a couple weeks ago, ladies and gentlemen, is doing very well. Uh, so if you want to check out Raftery's Ghost, a Mac and Millie mystery, perfect spooky tale for the spooky season, uh, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. And um, also, uh, our podcast is uh, brought to you by the many books of JB. So there is a ton of other books. If you go to mrmichaels.com, you can check those out. M I S T E R uh, M I C H A E L S, mrmichaels.com. Also, we have a subscriber exclusive um, tier of subscription for you guys at magic in the midwest podcast dot bandcamp dot com um for as little as three dollars a month you can listen to um the uh the great uh attraction smackdowns the great uh, just off the cuff riffing between me and bickering and bantering between me and uh, Ash. Uh, so it's very fun. Uh, so check those out as well. Also, we have met lots of great people through the podcast, um, one of which is actually in the parks this week um, in posting and, and showing us uh, what she's doing throughout the week in, in Disney parks. Um, and that is Emily over at... Uh, Magical Mouse Travel, uh, like JB said, she's someone we met through the podcast. She is also someone that is from the Midwest and uh, travels to Orlando often, so she's up on the latest. Um, but she can plan all the Disney and Universal and Disney Cruise Line uh, things for you, and um, she is just a joy to work with. We really enjoy her and uh, has become a very close friend of ours. So, if you're looking to book a trip, you definitely should contact her. Like I said, she can book, you know, dining, hotels, flight stuff, airport transfers. I don't know what flight stuff means. Your flight <laughs> and all the other stuff with your flight. Flight uh, stuff. Flight stuff. <laughs> uh, trip stuff and food stuff. No, so she can book all those things for you, mm -hmm. and um, it comes at no extra charge. You there's there's no fee for her services. There's no fee. To work and have this amazing person book your yeah. stuff for you. So what the heck are you waiting for? Yeah, and I mean, we've had a few friends reach out about booking trips to Disney recently, and they've looked at things on their own and have become extremely overwhelmed, yes. and we always yes. refer them to Emily. Uh, but if you haven't been in a while, it definitely is more overwhelming than it used to be, in my opinion. Um, and she is a great resource and just an amazing human being, so we highly highly recommend her we book our trips through her uh the best way to contact her is through email emily at magical mouse travel.com yes yes that's pretty uh so please uh let her let her know that we sent you because it kind of helps us uh, know how the you know how well our, our cross promo is doing right are we helping are we helping her or are we just blabbering idiots and i think it's the last one probably both Yes, or not? No, you're right. Ash, probably the last one. Um, so so yes, you guys, uh, we're very excited because um, uh, we are. You know, we don't have any trips like in the immediate future because you know with the fall. You know, it's crazy. It's filled with lots of holidays and and things to do. Well, and, and we were just there, and, and we were there in June. But we are uh, heading back um, to, well, and we were just at Universal in, in last month, so. Uh, but we are heading back down to um, uh, WD Dubs mm -hmm. um, in, in, the, in 2023, early 2023. Uh, so we're very pumped about that. It's going to be great. Um, and... Uh, and um you know that's uh we're just we're very excited so i'm very excited to go in january because it's not super hot 
That's right. Like my favorite thing ever. Yeah, Ash is a like you know she has to. I mean, if she could live in a hyperbaric chamber, in just a controlled environment, rolling around in a ball, it would probably be better for her. Rolling around in a ball, like a ball that's you like know, my body exactly is a ball? the right pressure. No, no, like a hamster ball for humans. <laughs> Exactly the right pressure not and true at all. setting and temperature. No, I just don't love extreme heat unless if I'm in the water or something or the shade, I can tolerate it. I just, I don't love super hot weather. Some people are just tougher than, than others. Um, uh, just built more tough. Some of us are going to be more dead <laughs> soon. No, I, um, I'm not. I, I would rather it be cold. So we did go in 20... I don't know. We went in January one other time. 2020? 2021? Right, right. 2015? I don't remember. Something like that. Um, and it was a great experience for me. I was yeah. like, this is amazing because mm-hmm. I don't I don't feel like I'm burning alive. No, no. I actually so. had like a sweatshirt. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Um, yeah, no, it was very pleasant. It, it was. It was very pleasant. So we are going to do that. And then... Um, yeah, that's just. I'm looking forward to to that. It's just. It's just. Man, it's gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice. Um. Anyway. Um. Also, I mean, that's the cool thing too. When you're a like this is. I mean, this is gonna be like a ridiculous plug for DVC. But I feel like when you are a DVC member, you do have like such a variety of experiences you know various experiences every time you go like because we're staying in a totally different area all and right i totally mean you don't different. have to be dvc to do that you no no stay at different resorts but and some dvc owners do stay in the same spot all the time oh yeah um, yeah which some is people totally do. fine too right but we we like to switch it up and uh it definitely yeah. feels like a different experience even this last trip which i know we talked about extensively before we stayed at copper creek and then moved over to grand floridian and it felt like two different trips yeah you yeah. know, when we moved, it was a very different well, vibe. Yeah, we focused yeah. on different parks when we were in different areas. Um, like if we stay at a Magic Kingdom resort, we tend to prioritize Magic Kingdom when we're closer to those parks. And like when we stayed at the Boardwalk, we did a lot of Epcot days. Not everyone does it that way. We do, and so it feels very different for us when we go back. Right. Right. So, yeah, but also it's interesting because I was just talking to a buddy who's also a DVC member, and mm-hmm. they have quite an interesting, because of the, you know, the, the um, because of the restrictions and the way the points system worked for that, you know, short period of time, you know, relatively short period of time um, with, you know, the pandemic and everything, mm-hmm. um, they had to use their points. So they were like, well, we have 70 points left on the table. We've got to figure out a way to do it. To use these, right? Yeah, that and, was yeah. It was kind of a specific issue with like just the pandemic with how we were able to use points, and so a lot of people have found themselves in this boat where they have like, extra points to use or not enough points to use right, or something right. more than more than the norm. Are you talking about uh, Jizzle Jazzle? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, so w- here, let me just tell you, like, just give me an example of like the varied experiences you could have. And we have done this in the past. We've talked about it on the podcast, but we've done the Savannah View um, room over at Animal Kingdom, and we just did that for a night, and it was incredible. Um, and they're doing the same thing, except they got like a you know the three bedroom villa or whatever, like a nine person, whatever fits nine. Is that two or three? No, that's three. The three bedroom. Oh, I don't know. Um, exactly, we have to look. But they're doing like a huge villa over at the Animal Kingdom Lodge in the savannah view but that's only for a night and then they head over to bay lake which is a completely different feel and they have a theme yeah. park view there but then also a lake view as well so i mean they they are shifting rooms uh, like three times but at the same time you know it's going to be a couple different experiences you right i really like the lake view at i mean the theme park view is amazing i but actually I like the prefer lake view. the lake view like, well, it was weird. I don't know. Because then you got the castle. You know what's interesting but, about that, though, is because of the way the building curves, your theme park view can be really good, but it can also be, like... Kind of weird. I think Weird-ish. we were considered yeah. a theme park view when we were there because we could see Space Mountain and all that, but we also looked right onto this giant 
Well, no, not giant. It was like this parking lot with a dumpster. And then a moat. Which yeah. is, you know, yeah. I don't know. When we're at Disney, I kind of don't expect to see things like that. Just because right. they kind of, you know, whatever. Right. Um, right. So it can be interesting. Everyone has different feels about, you know, the different views. And sometimes you can luck out, sometimes not. Yeah, um, yeah. We had, like, an extraordinary view at Copper Creek. But I know that there are rooms where the balconies you cannot see Yeah, because there's big beams there. It can there. be bad. So yeah. you kind of... It's kind of the luck of the draw a little bit. I mean, um, it, it's, yeah. But the lake view, because of the curve of the building, you're on the inside of the curve. And usually I would say all of those views are probably right, like, right. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But I like the lake view because of the, um, yes. no one can see what I'm doing. The, the thing that goes across, what is that? The, the lights. The water pageant. The, the electrical, water pageant. It's called the electrical water I'm pageant. I'm not going to remember. Okay, well. That's electrical okay. water pad. Yes. Yes. Happens every night, you guys, on the World Showcase. Or not, sorry, not World Showcase. <laughs> the Seven Seas Lagoon and Bay Lake. So, um, all right. Uh, so, moving on. moving on, we have got to tackle, you guys. It is still October. It is still the spooky season. I know. It's not as fresh in my and, mind anymore. And um, <laughs> Ash has lost her mind because she was only a couple weeks ago. She's like, it's not as fresh in my mind anymore. I don't know if I can do it A lot now. of life has happened in a couple of weeks. Uh, yes. Yes. Caused by I'm your exhausted. own issues. Right. Wait. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Probably, we, we have know. six houses to tackle. We're going to cover all of them. We're going to cover all of them real quick. So we... Um, You're going to take the lead <clears throat> and I'm going to come in with, with hot takes. Hot takes with Ash. Okay, so we um, all right. Let's just let's go to the let's weekend. Let's go over real quick what we did. All right, we so did we already Halloween, talked about Blumhouse. Yeah, yeah Halloween, Blumhouse, um, Dead Man's Pier, Winter's Wake, mm-hmm. and Fiesta de Chupacabras. Okay, that's right. Gotcha. Chupa, 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 chupa. Um, yes. All right. Uh, and today we're going to talk about um, the rest. So the weekend, Ash, after hours nightmare. Now the weekend was front and center. On all of the universal marketing efforts for Halloween Horror Nights uh, 31, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it was called The Weekend After Hours Nightmare, and it has some women in, like, like medical wrapping on their faces and then, like, bras, which I was okay with. And then, um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then it had The Weekend... <laughs> And then we had the weekend. Um, it's okay. With that. <laughs> the weekend with, like you know, varied various different versions of the weekend, like going yeah. through a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you know, what did you think, Ash, about the weekend after hours nightmare? Um, I, you know, go ahead. You you give me yeah, your thoughts you know first. What? I, uh, I'm not a huge like weekend the weekend band Mm -hmm. um but i like that one song blinding lights and there's maybe a few others but it's not like a must listen to for me but i like that song yeah um and after i read about this house and heard about it when it was announced i i feel like my expectations were what's the word tempered tempered um and so i just didn't expect a lot from it i was excited to hear the music i was hoping they would pick blinding lights because i like that song they had a Um, few different songs they did um so i was walking in with with low low expectations of this house and i have to say that i was pleasantly surprised i don't think it holds a candle to dead man's pier or halloween I would put it more in the mid-tier. middle, yeah, yeah, mid-tier range, and I don't know if it's because it actually hits or because my expectations of it were, were low. so low. It was fun. I was a little confused at what we were looking at sometimes in the house. Like he just has like it's like the weekend, and he's dressed in that like suit. red red or suit, maroon suit, or yeah, whatever it yeah. was, and had like different masks on that look like him but they were deranged versions of him so it was like interesting um i didn't feel like there was like a super common theme throughout the house other than just like weirdness (laughs) um which is fine with me 
Um, and then there was some cool lighting elements in the house. Um, yes, that was a big like, I feel like that plus. was my favorite part, but yes. there weren't any like scare actors in that part. Like It was just the lights and the mirrors for the most part yeah. in most of that part. So um, good, so good. But we had a good time in that house. I wouldn't say, like, oh my gosh, it's amazing, you have to go in, but it was fun. I had a very good time with the weekend. And was it because of the bras or? Um, no, I, I think, well, that was part of it. But, but, but it was also like a, it was also, um, it, so at the beginning, the, I'll just, no, I'm not going to give spoilers to people that, it, you know, but like in the beginning, you, you walk right in, and there's this, this bright room, and the weekend, a, a dummy, version of the weekend is like sitting in a chair and there's like all these wires going into his brain so it's basically like you know from from what i could sense this is like you know this is the energy and the craziness and the weirdness that comes out of 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 the weekend's mind right mm-hmm. and it's being channeled into the rest after of the hours into yes after hours nightmare it's being channeled into the rest of the house um and you know it, it just sort of that you kind of get you know, they did some interesting things with this house. There was like some show scenes area where there was like a stage and people performing and then people in the audience too. So I thought that was kind of neat. And the people in the audience were like performers as well, scare actors as well. Yeah, so, I mean, I was kind of confused by that. Right. I, mean, I don't know. I was sort of like, what's happening? I wasn't confused. I think it's because you're, it's cause you're a little Like you're more dumbish. dumbish. <laughs> Jinx! No, um, I, I understand what you mean. I think for me, though, they kind of did this after hours nightmare theme, which c- sort of just opens the door to like kind of anything. I feel like yeah. every room we walked into, there was something different happening, which isn't necessarily bad. It was just sort of. Right. Vague. Vague. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I think that was the intention. It was yeah, supposed no. to be strange and abstract. So. Um, don't say but abstract. You're, you're People that are stupid abstract. use that. Abstraction. This is my art it's abstract, and I just like threw paint on it, and it's a million dollars now. Sorry, you were, but a, you were a jock. Just a crock. You were a jock. I was also so it's okay with a high GPA it's, though. It's not, I not feel like you're too. just jealous. You're I just a little athletic. bit of a sports geek jock, so if you don't understand abstraction, uh, but anyway, so. <laughs> sure, I can see my face right now. Sorry, I was athletic and intelligent. <laughs> Sorry. But I didn't, you know, do Tai Chi and throw paint on boards and sell it for zillions of dollars. Well, that's your own fault. Brilliant. Um, okay. Um, so, so, you know, there is a cool, you're right, there's a lot of really neat lighting elements that were um, connected to the music. Like, I, the highlight, of course, is you know the ripoff on Aha's Take on Me, which is uh, Blinding Lights. Uh, so when the Blinding li- or Take on Me cover was playing throughout the, there it is, the bomb always. Mm. Uh, the cover was playing. I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm being stupid, but uh, it does sound a lot like that song. But it was cool because you could. It was mu- moving to the music. The lighting was connected, and it was cool. Now oh, cool. they had done a lot of different things with lighting throughout this um, this house, which I thought was great. And another interesting thing they've done with lighting with the ha- Halloween house mm-hmm. was that it was not dark. And yeah, no, I talked about that. I know. Last week. It, I, I know, and I think that's the. I think Universal's really kind of thinking about how to like they're it's it's so well done and crafted that they're thinking about how to light each scene like as if it were a movie you know i mean it's really great well and i think it's nice another not appreciation of horror nights not every single house has to be like pitch black narrow hallways every single jump scare you know like they i think it's nice to have that balance um, so yeah, I, I had a good time. It was I creative. Had a better was creative. time with the weekend than like you're right, Ash. I, I didn't really know what to expect, but I came out pleased. Yeah. Um, what would you give it? Mm, maybe like I'm not gonna give it super high. Like maybe a, a seven. seven. Yeah. Solid seven. Yeah. yeah, I think I'd give it like a seven point five. Like I feel like it's almost great. 
No. But it's not, not quite. Great. And it's just solid good. Don't you feel like a big part of it, though, was that, like, was the music? Like, if I was a huge Weekend fan, I probably would lose Are it. Are there huge Weekend fans? I mean, he is he is very popular. Well, I feel like people like that song. The Aha uh-huh, Take On Me. Will you, sh- will you stop? Remake. Oh. Right. Stop. No. Blinding Lights is the song we're talking about. That's what it sounds like. Okay, wait. This is like a separate topic. Very similar. You just forget it. Very similar. Uh, okay. Here we go. Um, and then uh, we'll do Hellblock, Hellblock Horror next. So Hellblock Horror was interesting. I didn't know what to expect. I, what To me, it seemed like it was a sci- sci-fi horror house. Like there were like aliens. It looked like yeah. aliens... In like a, and I and I'm sure there's like a. I honestly don't remember a ton about this house other than the fences. It, you know what? It's very it's funny because it does it other than the fences. You know, yeah, there were some cool like electrical not, effects, and I was not expecting. Um, yeah, there. I thought it would just be people. It says, "Enter a prison whose savage inmates are monstrous creatures. If they break free from their cells, it's a death sentence." I guess for I wasn't everyone. paying attention to the description. Well, right. the weird thing is that description is very, very short and very, very vague. So, in my mind, I'm filling it in, and I'm thinking it's like we're in space because all the monsters looked weird and and like alien like. So, yeah. To me, it was like they almost could like have they done. They reuse some from like Depths of Fear or something. There were like some lots of monsters. Aquatic, Aqu- aquatic, aquatic, <laughs> auto, auto, rotica, rotica. Um, yes, but yeah, not everything and, like, super fit there. There for was me. and there was this weird language, like, like there was like this weird signs with this weird symbols on it. Like, like it was like we were in a different planet hmm. or up in space in some space prison. I wasn't paying attention to that. Like, yeah, there, even on the the graphic, it has that. I was probably being, I was busy being disappointed in the house. Ooh. 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 Hot take. Uh, but anyway, I mean, I, that one was... The least memorable for me, clearly. Uh, it, it had some cool monsters. Like, I'm a big fan of monsters, so I liked looking at all the cool different monsters. Did you like looking at the monsters? I liked looking at I the think monsters, you just say Ash. monsters more. Monsters. 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 Mm. What makes a monster? Um, God, that movie with Charlie's there and holy hell. Don't watch that. That's actually scary. Um, um, but anyway, so... Stay on topic. I am on topic. Hellblock Horror was... Um, <laughs> Hellblock Horror was a lot of cement, a lot of concrete, some sirens going off. Fences. Lots of strobes. And... Strobes. Strobes. <laughs> and some cool, like, creatures on display, like, try to get you. Um, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So, what do you give it, Ash? Four. I guess we don't have to spend too much longer. Five? Four or five? Block. I don't know. Four or five? Yeah. I'd still give it a... F- and it was a big house. It kind of kept going. I was kind of like, all right, well... It was a big house. You know. Because it, it was in the area where the original Stranger Things was. And that was a big house, too. You're a big house. <laughs> the big house! Thank you. No, I thank you, Ash. <laughs> Is that a compliment? <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so we've got four more houses to go through, Ash. We better get going here. Yeah, well, uh, so Hellblock Horror was a four for you. I would give it a five because I like monsters. Okay. Um, yeah, not n- nothing too memorable here, guys. Uh, but you know that's okay. Mm-hmm. Still solid. I mean, we had fun going through it. Yeah, that's the most important part. Okay, and then we have uh, Spirits of the Cove. Spirits of the Coven. Which, um, which uh, hot takes with Kate actually said it reminded her of Case Files. Oh yeah, uh, I can see that. Unearthed from mm-hmm. the year before. Yeah, totally. and I would agree. It does have a lot of the same like um, old time, like thirty twenties thirties look to it. Art mm-hmm. Deco, um, basically Spirits of the Coven. This one almost did it for like this one. This one was really cool. Like, I think there's lots of really neat things in this house. Mm-hmm. Um, it just almost was like, 
almost there to like be great. It was like close, but I don't know if it was just our run through, but I feel like we didn't, maybe we missed a lot of the scares or something. I think we did. And I feel like there were maybe some scare actors missing from places. Right. Uh, maybe there was a, what is that called? Shift change. Yeah. Which happens. So Spirits of the Coven, you walk in and it's like a speakeasy. So it takes place during the 20s through Prohibition. And it's a speakeasy. And of course, there's a guy, you know, it's kind of like Roger Rabbit, where like there's a door, a secret door, and he opens up that little slot in the door and he's like, What's the password? You know, and you're mm-hmm. supposed to say, You know, go F yourself. Go F yourself, B. That's what I heard the password was. Yeah, once. that's right. This is Magic the Midwest podcast. We don't mess around. <laughs> go F yourself. Go F yourself. <laughs> uh, anyway, so. <laughs> Sorry, severe today. Yeah, yeah. I'm struggling. I'm conflicted today. She's very conflicted. Uh, Sorry. I'm gonna whatever uh, to me whatever. So, um, so spirits of the cub. <laughs> I'm not conflicted about horror nights. I'm conflicted about something else. Something else. Yes. Our marriage. Uh, no. <laughs> That's terrible. Sometimes. She's not, guys. She's not. Sometimes. No, she's not. When you're being bad, like you're just I'm like never bad, bad. You're just like never a really bad, bad person. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Um, so what I loved about Spirits of the Coven is that it tells a cool story like this actually progresses as you go through the house like it has a clear like things get worse and worse and worse as you go and you start to understand more and more and more what's happening in the house which I thought was great and I noticed that right away so kudos to the storytellers of HHN because this was well done it's the original house, and I understood what was happening as I went through it. And I was, like, putting pieces together as we went. So, like, you go in, and there's, like, the you, know, you get past the door, and then you're inside the speakeasy, and there's death. Like, there's some death happening. There's bar- a bartender. There's, you know, like, a woman in a room, like, kind of losing her mind. Um, and you, as you go further and deeper, there's more death. Mm-hmm. And then you get it gets darker, and then you start to see these weird symbols on the wall, and you get into like, oh, this is like a, a coven, like yeah. we're inside like this horrible place that's mm-hmm. like full of witches who are killing people and sacrifices and stuff. So that was neat. Yeah. Um, and then there was like this big witch on display at the end, and like she was up top, and it, it was. I thought that the storytelling on this one was really solid. Um, and I love the 20s. I was just going to say look. that. Look, yeah. yeah. I mean, man, you guys. It gets points for me just for that. Yeah, it's for the just, setting and yeah, the set design. Yeah, it was really cool. And I, as much as it was in the beginning, I really liked that scene in the beginning that you're talking about with the bartender yeah. guy and then that lady that was... Yeah. She was kind of... I felt like she was kind of into you. I mean... I, like, slipped her your number, and I don't know if she's called. I, but it had, like... I support it. Yeah, what your chance... The theme park, the the icon of mm-hmm. uh, Horror Nights, thought it said I was really cute. Great. So I was like, Are you gonna, well, thanks, Chance. You should, you should, like, pursue that. But she's like, you're I cute. I think having women like that around would look make me look less crazy by right. default. Right, right. So I think it's a win-win. Yeah, win. Chance is into JB. So. And if you want to, like, move out, like, you have my full support. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so... But no, it was a really, it was a neat house. Um, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was a blast. I thought I, I had a good time. So I give it an eight. It wasn't great. Oh, no. A seven, another 7.5, I guess. Because it wasn't like, because we missed a lot of scares or maybe they were just weren't there. I don't know. But like, it did feel the first half for us felt a little empty and a little like, what's happening? You know, uh, but it got better. You know, and I just, like you said, the set design was good. So I would give it another seven. Yeah, seven, I feel like I, I seven-ish. mean, I might go with seven and a half because I, I just enjoyed it. I right. enjoyed the setting, um, and that's just a personal ranking. Right. I don't know if everyone would rank it that way. Right. It's like it had the potential to be higher because of what we missed. But yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. It was fun. Yes, yes. Um, and then, Ash, uh, one of our most memorable moments. <laughs> Was the I really wish people could see another a video of this. <laughs> another darkly lit? It's very dark. Um, uh, house, but I'll be honest with you, I think this is a, one of the sleepers. Like this is a really fun one. 
um, now, descendants do you feel that way of destruction. Because of what happened, or do you feel like it really was still? No, I, 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 there were some really cool moments in this one. There was. I feel like this was maybe the scariest one for me. Even outside of, I mean, Halloween was had moments that were really <sighs> scary. But I feel like in Halloween, you almost knew when they were coming because there are certain. If you've seen the movie, like you know, you're walking into a hallway and there's two closets. Like you knew because right. that that house right. was relatively well lit. Kind of when it was coming, or you would see a door and right. you're just like, no, Michael's Michael. there, yeah. right? Um, not the whole time, because I feel like everyone said that that was maybe the best house. This house was dark and scary. Yeah. Pretty much was. the whole time. Yeah. 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 Lots of, like, dark, narrow hallways and people popping up from places that were not super obvious, because sometimes it can be, and I, I feel like that, especially that one guy from, like, right here. Yes. Side, yes. And he stuck his head way oh, out. Oh, it was really cool. Oh, Yeah. Yes. So, again, another, like... Another really neat progression of the story type house. So, like, we're in a subway. Mm -hmm. Descendants of Destruction is like a New York subway that just, I don't know, was abandoned, went raw. We have something obviously bad happened. And, like, the subway gets, like, they crashed, and there's trains, like, flipped over, and there's trains, like, you know, diagonally smashed into another part of the subway. And,. Like you, you walk it. There's there was a cool like the set design again was yeah. really neat. There's like mm -hmm. all this smoke and it was like green, a uh, green uh, hue and green lights and like the sideways like trade car, like subway trade car, like just like on its side and you walk into that and of course like there's all these things sitting on the chairs and you're like oh my gosh what's gonna get me, um, and then you keep going further in and it's kind of really tight narrow hallways. Um, and you, you know, you're in the train station area and then you start to go deeper into this subway and you're in basically a cave system at this point. There's like stalagmites and stalactites and everything and it gets darker. The green neon is still like still a lot of green and blue hues as you went through. Um, and then they get, and then so it, it, when we entered the cave area, some, somebody, somebody, somebody scared ash and she let out this like this... i think you're confusing it no no it's this house no no i know it's this house but i don't think you have exactly how it happened all right well then tell us tell us i think what happened was there was a particular hallway where that guy was talking about he it's sort of from above mm -hmm. he must be like on a ledge behind the wall or something because he sticks his head out really far. I mean, I feel like most of his torso is sticking out all of a sudden. Like he's, there's no one in the hallway and he gets right in your face and like follows you. And I feel like his face was like inches away from my face and I was just not expecting it. Most of the people come out of like doors or little areas where they're standing. Yeah. And you don't usually have to worry about above you or below you. Once in a while, Universal will switch it up and do things like that. But yeah. I think it's harder on the scare actors to yeah. do things like that. Anyways, so that happened. So I was already on high alert after that happened because it really frightened me. So after, it was actually after that moment, I was behind you and we're going through the house. That guy had already freaked me out. So now I'm like, all right, the scares can come from anywhere. Right, like it's not, right. you know, whatever. And it's super dark. And you screamed a little bit about something or jumped yeah. and you ducked like slightly moved your shoulders down and yeah. because you did that and I was holding on to you and could see virtually nothing I assumed there was someone else above us <laughs> and I crouched way down and just screamed without <laughs> even looking <laughs> yeah, but the scream was like a dead like something was dying like it was like a cat dead cat you guys when we go through the it houses, like, I almost always a dead cat. Like Ash right? has like, like a no. like a Fay Ray regular scream, like a normal scream, Do like I? a roller what? coaster scream, and then she has like this ah like thing, and that was what that happened. That's not what I sound like. <laughs> I'm way cuter than that. My scream is adorable. No, I I don't accept. Um, no, what happens most of the time? Hey, shush. Sorry. Sure, we sorry. A visitor down here. Our kid um, is just. Our child loud. wants to be around us. Yeah, how um, dare he? 
Anyway. When we go through the houses, almost always, JB is in front of me and I'm usually hanging onto his shirt or backpack. And I'm usually fine. It's just that I need some direction so I know where to go. <laughs> I don't think Ash could be a final girl. I can't really. Yes, I totally could. <laughs> I would just, I would be, I would just kill everyone and I'd be like splattered with blood at the end and right. kind of be, be wondering if I was deranged. Kind of like you're next. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly like that. Love that movie until the very, very end. Then it bothered me. But other than yes, that, it's really good. Yes, it was good. so good until the end. Yeah. Um, so anyways, so what happens is I'll scream all on my own for things that are happening. But if JB screams about anything happening to him, even if it doesn't scare me, I'll scream because he's screaming. And then we both oh my crack gosh. up. And that's generally Guys, what we, we do in the house. And we laughed have like <laughs> so hysterically fun. for like the next like three minutes. Like the rest of the house. Yeah. And so, yeah, you kind of ducked or you did something where you just sort of like stepped and you slightly went down. So I just assumed there was <laughs> above us and I screamed and like pulled you down with me and crouched down really low. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. I still wasn't sure if something happened or not because I didn't want to look. I sort of was like looking up as I screamed, oh, but only my slightly. Gosh. It was so funny. I guess you probably had to be there, but it was fun. And well, no, we I think laughed. people who have done Horror Nights... Or people who want to do it. Like, guys, that's the fun of Horror Nights. Like, it is. You scream and you're scared. Like, but then you start laughing. Like, you do really laugh. And in this yeah. one, we just, like, We do really laugh lost a it. lot in the houses. But, I mean, you're very entertaining, too. Like, in Dead Man's Pier, I think I said, those guys dress like, I know what you did last summer. Yeah. You just yell, they know what you did last summer. Right. It makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was trying. I am kind of. Or you'll do, like, the Michael voice. But from- it is, like, things are happening to me. Like, I'm, al- I'm almost, I'll be honest. Like, I'm just reacting. I'm not really, I'm not, like, putting out a show. Trying. I'm just being goofy myself. I know, it's hard to myself. imagine. You are put, you're always putting on a show. Well, I guess, yeah. But, uh, but I mean, it's just natural. I mean, okay? I like it, it's obviously. Natural. It's like the only time <laughs> right. is <at> Horror Nights. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> so, but anyway, so Descendants of Destruction, and then one of the most memorable parts of it is the, near the end is a completely dark hallway, mm-hmm. and the, there's this, like, this floating face, like, you know, mm-hmm. like, like, that's lit up, you know, like, with the black light. And it's just really creepy and awesome. Like, that was really cool. Yeah. So I was like, that is a great effect. Like, this is really dark. Ash and I are scared. We know that there's, like, somewhere to go. We have to keep walking ahead. And, like, then there was this, like, floating face that just scared the bejesus out of us. It was just really yeah. neat. So we just cracked up the whole time. Mu- yeah, mutated humans in a dark New York, or you know, maybe yeah, not Yeah, I was New trying York, to, there subway. was, like, a girl on the subway, a scare actor, that looked kind of like Chance, but more deranged. Yeah. yeah. And I was trying to ask her if she thought one of our friends was cute. <laughs> I was like, right. Do you think this guy's cute? Do you think this guy's cute? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, good good times, good times. Uh, so what'd you give Descendants? I mean, the actual house was probably, I don't know, maybe like an 8.5? I would give it an 8. An I would eight. give it an 8. I think but I mean, it for had me, the point five set was, design was cool. Us was... The like laughter. The, part with the, more, the more lights was cool, like the yeah. subway and the things that you could actually see. Um, I thought it was kind of a neat idea. Yeah. And um, but yeah, it wasn't like the strongest house we've ever done. But our specific experience in there was funny. Yes. And so yeah, it yeah. was good. Good stuff. I still wasn't even sure when we walked out if there actually was someone above us or not. Right. Because I had to ask you. Yeah, I don't even you know. Were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> there really wasn't. But that's that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so that was a great one. And then. Um, I guess we could talk about Bug Ho real quick. Is that the last one? No, we still have monsters to talk about. Oh, yeah, about. okay. We'll, I guess we could end with monsters. We'll talk with... Monsters? No, sorry, monsters. Universal monsters. Legends collide. Um, we'll talk about bugs eaten alive, or as we affectionately called it, Bug Ho. Mm-hmm. Um, long story. Um, very B-movie, 1950s um, sci-fi horror kind of take on just silliness. Um, yes, there was supposed to be some sort of product. In the same spot as Slaughter Cinema, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is another house that's similar, sort of. Um, yeah. Uh, kind of a weird house. You know, it was okay. I, I, I mean, 
you know, it was, it was a creative fun. idea, I guess. Yeah. It was, I think, definitely designed to be the house that didn't take itself too seriously. Yes. Like, they were not. This it was the comedy house. This something they were trying house. to pull off and didn't. I feel like they did exactly what they set out yes. to do. Yes. Um, so, in that way, I respect it. But it was not very scary. Unless you're someone that doesn't like bugs, and then the house would have bothered you because well, it would have terrified you because there bugs are bugs around. everywhere, and there were bugs like on the walls. Okay, yes, there and... were, but also like most of them weren't moving. Like these are yeah, like, things glued to the bugs. wall, and when they had like the really big ones, it was like people dressed up. And <laughs> it was so fun. silly looking that yes. like it was not terrifying. I'm not a huge fan of spiders myself, yeah. and there yeah. was a big spider at the end, which you knew was fake right like even when i go on forbidden journey i have to like give myself a little pep talk i'm like all right this is not a real spider yeah so like, yeah get through it get through it you're you're, in your, so, you're a grown woman so you can do it you can make this happen. um and you when i had to walk happen. by it i was like all right let's just take a deep breath here so yeah if you weren't a fan of bugs and bugs freak you out this would not be the house for you but this was not a house that was like dark and very scary with giant bugs popping out right. of you. I would say right. it was more comical. Like you said, a B movie. There was this lady at the beginning that was, you know, dressed in nineteen fifties attire trying to talk about how this I think it was some sort of product you were supposed to use to like get rid of bugs. Yes, yes. And ultimately it made the bugs bigger and destroyed the house and yeah. scary and as every room you walk through more and more stuff was happening. The bugs were getting bigger and Right. Um, right. It was really just silly and then she she was at the end, like with her all hair all turned messed on, up, yeah, yeah, saying to get out of there. Or yeah, I don't know what. <laughs> it was silly. It but was it, silly. I'm trying to think of another house that's similar, but I don't know if they're like. I mean, Slaughter Cinema was kind of like that. You know, they always have like a kind of kitschy. Yes, you know, but I feel like that one was scarier. Yeah, than this one maybe. This one was sort of just like I feel like there's one I'm not remembering. Maybe it'll come to me. Yes. From yes. years past. Okay, um, anyway. And then we have Universal Monsters. Well, you didn't rate that one. You should rate it real quick. Oh, Bugs. Eating Alive. What do you give it? I mean, for what it was supposed Seven? to be. Seven? Th- yeah. Seven, good. Yeah. Yeah, for what it's supposed to, Yes, I think if you kind of... If you're looking to be scared or frightened by, like, if you're if bugs really don't bother you, it's not big that big. Of a now, deal. if you could only have if you only had time for nine houses for whatever reason, I probably would say you don't when, have to do this one. When HHN opened, the buzz uh, social media, it, you know, bug bug ho was trending, so it was like people were like flipping out about it and posting about it. Um, you know, but it's really the comedy house. I mean, it was the the funny house. I think the thing about that though is that bugs bother a lot of people. Yes, and so it was just yes. You know, I think it was something a lot of people skipped. Right, right. And then we've got the the final uh, one of the best. I think uh, absolutely one of the best. Um, Universal Monsters Legends Collide, mm-hmm. uh, and it takes place in Egypt. And when you walk in, there's a big statue of Anubis, and there's like all these like you're at an archaeological dig site, um, and man, it's cool. There's some cool backstory that like Dracula's heading there because he wants something from, you know, the mummy's tomb, and the Wolfman is also there because he wants something from the mummy's tomb. But they have this big epic fight: the mummy versus the Wolfman versus Dracula, mm-hmm. and lots of really fun set design in here well lit you know i feel like you saw everything you know good effects with the monsters um and you know just just a really neat house that like then they had this really great tactic which i'm sure they've used in the past but like there's like this double scare part Mm -hmm. that got me parts like that really good like really got me good because i was looking one way and i saw the scare and i was like okay i'm gonna you know that i got the scare so i could relax no, they slam you with another scare right mm-hmm. away. Um, this is one of those houses where I would say, even if you knew where the scares were coming from, because a lot of times you can yeah. see it coming, right. um, still would get you. Right. Like, they just, 
I don't know, we went through the house twice, and yeah. the double scare got you both times. Yes, yeah. Um, and just because the way that they had them dressed and, like, the costumes and the masks and stuff were pretty, like, yes. they don't always go that scary. These were, like, very, I think, scary versions of those characters. Yes. They went scarier. Um, and it was just, I mean, this was arguably one of my favorite houses. It was really cool. I thought that... The double scare stuff was really interesting. You could follow the story. You were invested. It's cool that it's the classic monsters. Yes. And then the best part was that they had different winners. Yes. At the end um, on different days. So the first night we went through it was Wolfman. Wolfman right? won. And then it was uh, the Mummy? Then the Mummy won the next yeah. night. And then, Which was cool. And then... Our friends went a third time, a, th- a third night, and Dracula won. Yeah, which was cool because at the end you would see who the winner was, and that particular you character like cheer really for wasn't them. there to scare you, but you were kind of just cheering like, them on. Yeah, yeah, and they were happy with it, so it was like, kind of fun. Huh? Yeah, and it's cool because they have different death scenes, like at mm-hmm. the end each right. day. So, like one night it was, you know, Dracula pinned up against the wall with a stake in his heart, like mm-hmm. when you walked into that room and. And then the mummy's holding the, or the wolfman's holding the mummy's head. Right. And he's like, you know, yeah. and everybody's cheering for him, you know. Yeah. And and then the next night it was something different, you know. So right, that last part. <laughs> right. The last few right. Parts, yeah, so just so. a really fun dynamic house, and who doesn't love the classic Universal monsters? I mean, and I think if you're someone that appreciates, the, I mean, the house is just. I feel like every time they've done. They did a house, I think yeah. it was the first year or the second year I was there, maybe 2019. Yeah, the they Universal did. Monsters That was house. a really cool house, too. I mean, maybe they used more darkness, I felt like, because I feel like Dracula yes. creeped up us, up on us a few times yeah. in that house and right. Bride of Frankenstein and stuff. Um, all of those houses, I feel like, have been really fun. good. Yeah. 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 They're very fun, gothic, horror awesomeness this is so. definitely one of the houses where you would scream and i screamed and then we both crack up right, and then like right. when you were because the way jim reacts you know he reacts like you know he's he reacts like yeah. he's not someone that doesn't react to things and so you were reacting to a scare and then what happened was i could see it happening in front of you, you almost would turn a little bit to the side because we would laugh together yeah and then i had already seen that the next character had already popped up oh, was gosh. right in your and face then I would turn back. and then you would turn back and be like Whoa! you know like and flip <laughs> out awesome. and then crack up at that too so oh, it yeah. was just funny really good times really yeah. good times um, yeah, so uh, just awesome house. I would give it a 10. Yeah, it's me one of too. my 10s as well. So, I mean, Halloween, this one, and Dead Man's Pier, just so This one solid. I would say would be the perfect balance between, you know, like Halloween was really scary and fun. Dead Man's Pier was more about the setting, environment and right. setting and stuff and wasn't as scary but cool. Yeah. And this one was like the perfect balance yeah, between the really two. Yeah, really good, really good. So... Um, all right, so that was our review of HHN 31, ladies and gentlemen. Can't believe it, but yes, we, we have gone through all the houses. Um, uh, you know, So please, again, uh, reach out to Emily at Magical Mouse Travel if you want to go check out HHN or any of their uh, parks or destinations around the world. Um, and uh, please rate and review us at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube. Um, and head over to MrMichaels.com to check out those books. Raftery's Ghost to Macamillie Mystery is currently available. A uh, new book just came out. So, uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, from the Midwest, see you later.